Um, and today, I took and pre-mixed all my colors from this plein air. So I matched up all the colors, put them on swatches, and then mixed these. And this took about uh, three hours this morning to mix all the different colors. And the reason is because of all the different, how close the colors are in value and color and shade. So for every, what you call, what I call local color, what, every color that I see out there, I, I do a, a warm and a cool version in addition. So if I, if I see this bright yellow sunlight, I mix a cool and a warm. Okay, so there's three colors for every color I see. Okay, so that's why it took so long to do the mixing. That, I'm not going to bore you mixing because we only have two hours. Um, these are plein air uh, paintings, and I do um, keep them for as long as I can to try to do larger paintings. Um, so both of those paintings there are museum finished paintings, but they did start as a um, sketch. I call these sketches. They're done on boards, not on canvases, because they're easy to pack. Um, it's new traditions. It's on the supply list. Um, I like them because they don't warp, um, and they're museum quality, and it's linen on top. These are the swatches that I do while I'm out on location. So I carry a little book. And while I'm painting these, I'll do a quick swatch and write down how I got that color. Because the, when you're outside, the light is so bright. And then when you bring it indoors, it changes. And it's almost impossible to mix it indoors. So I, these are my notes. And one example of what you can do, this, this is all Prussian. This one color Prussian blue is up in the corner. So from this one tube of paint, I was able to make all these colors with the one two. So I'll do swatches like this in the studio. So I practice, you know, clarity of color. And then when I go out, I'm able to do them very quickly like this. So I do both in the studio swatches, out of the studio. And I use them, I keep them, and I don't let anyone have them. <laughs> um, on my large pieces, I do massive swatches, and I lay them on the floor in front of the paintings. Now, this, these paintings here, take almost, this took almost a year to paint. Um, the, most of the work is over on that side. Uh, this final painting probably, it did take a year. Um, but the actual work, which we'll see today, it goes very quickly once you figure everything out. Okay, So if I take care of the... Uh, swatches and the color and being outside and I mix them properly, then putting them on the canvas takes no time at all, right? Um, this, this one I'm going to talk about in a second, but let's, let's get started. Um, if you want to know about my history in this month's magazine, Fine Art Connoisseur, which I, I didn't have enough to give to everyone, but they're at um, Barnes & Noble right now. And there's a six-page article on actually my life, so it's a little much, but you can read about it there. Um, Vasari paints is the um, material, the paint I use. Um, you're welcome to pick up um, the information card. And rosemary brushes is the brushes I prefer. And she has graciously sent these catalogs for everyone. Um, even though she's in the UK, she got these to me in 24 hours. So it's they, and they're all over the country. They travel, and so it's it's worth. Their, and they're not expensive, which is wonderful. Uh, but sorry, is expensive. But once I tell you why I use it, then you'll understand. You know why I why I get them. They graciously sent this thing. So we're going to do a raffle midway. We are at the break. At the break. Um, so I want to thank them for. Um, contribute giving those to me for you guys and then there's a little card of, of my some of my work here back there um, if you're not a if you're a beginner painter I'm, I'm 
well, I want to encourage you to get both of these books. And if you're not a beginner painter, you need to get these books. <laughs> because if you read this, this at first, maybe two things will make sense. And then three years later, you read it again, and four things make sense. And then you read it again. It's, it's as you learn, they'll make more sense. So this is very, very important composition for artists, these two books. OK, so this is Edgar Payne's composition of outdoor painting. Edgar Payne's. You can take photos with your phones at the break. And then uh, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. These are key. Yeah. OK, okay so um, oh, and then I'm uh, very cautious about um, chemicals in my studio. I only use uh, walnut oil as my medium, nothing else, um, because I, I don't think you need it and because of the quality of the paint. So Vasari paints are just pigment and linseed oil. Um, you're supposed to store them up like this so the pigment stays in the oil. And you can come up during the break and look how runny it is. So there's no need for any type of medium. So I have a safe studio. Um, and the only other medium I use is uh, cold wax, which I'll, I'm sure, there, there, has anyone heard of cold wax using oil painting? One person might, maybe two. But um, this is a medium I use also, and it's um, safe. So Gamblin, if you go online to Gamblin, they'll tell you what products are safe and what aren't in mediums. So that it's a good website. So you can take a picture of Gamblin. Um, OK, so I think I'm ready to go here. Um, I'm going to, why a square? Well, if you read those books about composition, you'll understand that most landscapes are horizontal. And when you get in a competitive field of art, you're competing against hundreds of, and thousands sometimes for museum shows. And so you need to stand out, and you need to be different. And so the reason I choose square, especially with seascapes, is because it creates a tension. It's not normal. So immediately when you see the canvas, you, you stop because it's not a normal thing to see a square. So that's one of the very first tricks I learned um, to get notice. And how I deal with a square is, is very difficult. Um, and I think of it like this. This piece here is based off of sheet of music. So when you look at a sheet of music, um, you see how it, up here, it's kind of the rhythm is smooth, and then it intensifies, and then slowly go, and each is line by line by line. And I thought, it's just like a seascape, each wave as it comes in. And I thought, well, that'll be easy for me to do. You know, I just put the waves kind of like this. But then the tricky part is, is this is two dimensional, and I need it to go like that, right? So in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. So when, I'm, when I started a composition on a square, and I'm doing a, a landscape or a seascape, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of this. And so every section is in your eye stepping backwards or forwards or downwards, okay? So I am, we, we saw the photo of what I'm doing, which will make no sense to you. I mean, maybe you can see it. Can you see? So what this is is a, a photo of a larger, um, this is on the Pacific Coast in Santa Cruz. And I, I want to make sure that whatever I put in this square has impact. And in order to do that, sometimes you have to cut down the borders. So this is what I'm going to put on here. And for me, immediately in my mind, I'm seeing these lines across. I know some people grid. I don't grid. Because I can already see it in my head. And I already can spatially figure it out without measuring. And if you can't do that, then you should use a grid, and you should measure it out. Um, I, I'm sure there's all kinds of programs that could do it on here. 
Um, and what I do at the beginning of a painting is this very runny stuff. It's called transparent red oxide. And what it is, is it's a very transparent, and I use a big, fat bristle brush. This isn't synthetic, it's bristle. And it's um, they're really cheap because um, I don't care that it has a, I, I'm trying to scrub it into this canvas. It's, there's a weed, and I don't care how it looks at first because I want to set up the abstraction. And for me, the abstraction is the large shapes. And so up here, I'm not sure really what I want to do because maybe I want to maybe I want a back maybe I want a background like that. Maybe I want a sky. I don't know. So I always leave that. I know where my point of interest is, which you'll read in the books if you don't know. It follows the golden triangle. So I, I really not sure if I want it in the middle. When you get to a certain point, you can put your your uh, center of interest in the middle to create even more tension. So when I start, I just basically, what I see here is that there's the lower half here. And you can see how dry this canvas is, which is very, it's a linen by Masterpiece. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just draw in the shadow shapes, what I see, the light. Um, this and then there's the rock here, whatever. So I, I don't, I'm not even um, concerning myself with measuring. I don't need to. Um, what I have to think about is the abstraction of what is going to create energy. Um, I don't draw on the canvas. I never have. I've tried. I've seen people draw with pencil or charcoal, and, and they draw it all out. But I. For some reason, it's never worked for me, so I don't do that. Um, so I just quickly put this in here. We got we got light there. There's a space here. Then there's another wave, and then we just tuck this in here, and then we got a dark shadow there and there, and then there's something coming here, here. There's a rock back here. So this is how fast it should be. It shouldn't be this shaky, but. Um, and then the horizontal lines of the ocean are really important, but I'll show you why. But this is really, really dry. So I'm going to increase the oil, and I'm going to scrub even harder into the, uh, oh, Shout out any question you have, okay? While I'm painting, because I start, I'll start to go into my head, and then you won't hear anything or know anything. So, uh, even when I'm talking, you can interrupt me because I know uh, it's important um, to know what you're thinking. Because I don't know what you're thinking. I know what I'm thinking. Yes. So this is walnut oil, and I, I have a yogurt every day. I don't take any lunches, um, but I do have yogurt and. That's what I put my all my oil on. So just makes sense. If yeah, if you have any questions about supplies or mediums, I even though I don't use any, I know all about all of them because I tried them all. Um, my way isn't the only way. There's a million ways, and I love to hear what anyone else is successful with. This just works for me. Um, this this I've I've had a lot of mistakes and bought a lot of materials to get to this. So now that it's working, I don't need to, uh, well, I'd like to try. I, the cold wax is something the last two years I've been doing, and, and I, I was open to trying that. So, so if anyone has any suggestions, you can tell me what works for them. But. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start putting in the darks where I think the darks will be. Um, I'm thinking about um, the energy of the composition, how I'm going to fool everybody with my skills to make the water look like it's uh, moving, and how do I do that? Because that's the trickiest thing about seascapes is they always look plastic or fake. 
And I learned something through um, the Academy of Art doing my master's was um, classical training. And everything um, starts with an underpainting. I don't tint my canvases because this is how I draw the painting in. If, I, if this was all red, then I would be doing brown on top of it. And brown isn't going to help the optical illusion that I need to create to create movement. And so if I have a red underpainting and I put a mostly green blue over it, it creates a vibration uh, for your eye. So it, it shakes, it vibrates. So it makes the water feel like it's moving. So um, if you think of, like, I always give an example of sporting teams, like, um, I don't know, any sporting team, you think, what is it, the Broncos, orange and blue. So if you're going to do something that's really blue, then you want the orange, see? So you, you have to have the undercolor has to create some sort of, you know, effect, right? So these all start with this transparent red oxide because I like it because it's transparent. I know people use burnt sienna. Um, I would use burnt sienna if I was doing a forest because there's a brown in it. This is more orange red. So I'm thinking about that in my head, like I'm going to be tricky. I, I, I'm creating drama by creating, you know, cutting the corners. Um, I'm using the red underneath and then um, I'm just, let me, let me get this in really quick and, and then I'm going to jump to something which you'll be surprised about. So um, while I'm putting this in, I'm being careful on my drawing even though it doesn't look like I am. So I see um, a stripe of water that's darker than, than something that isn't. I keep it like that. If I see the core shadow, which is in the middle here, softer, I'll do that. And it'll darker and the thing like that. So I will completely develop this. Now I'm going to jump really quick because this, this process for me takes two days. Okay? And I didn't want to spend this two hours just doing a red painting for you. Okay? So what I did do uh, was I, two days ago, underpainting for you <coughs> if it's not upside down you can't you can't even tell so now no no it should be so I I uh, thought two days was enough but I forgot that we're in Massachusetts um, so this is this is not this is not dry it should be um, does that bother me? No, it doesn't bother me. Um, would it, um, it should be dry though. Okay, so I will, I will show you that. I, if, if it's really wet, it's easier to see. Um, there's a tool. Everyone should get one of these. It's a rubber stump. So some, someone's familiar. It's a rubber stump. And what, what I do when I get into the beginning of the painting, and I, and I want to start doing fine lines. So what I do is I, I fill in as much as I can, and then I go back in and start doing it even more, um, particular with this rubber stump. So if there's this, um, a line here that goes like this, see? So I can, I can draw with this. So what I do is I open up areas that I think are part of the drawing that are important to me where I need to have a hard edge or a light edge or soften edge rather. So does anyone have a question between that and this? Um, do I do the same thing with the plain air? Um, I do. So I use an acrylic um, under, under painting color. Um, not transparent red oxide, but a burnt sienna. So I'll use an acrylic and it dries immediately um, underneath. Th this, I think that doing this creates a better, um, 
it attaches to the canvas better because I really take this brush and I really get in every single crease. You could see how dry it was. That's why it takes so long. I have to rub it, rub it, rub it, and get it inside every single crevice in there. So when, I, when it dries and I put the next layer on, the little flecks of red come through, right? So it creates that illusion like pointillism, you know, where the, the dots on top of the dots, it's the same exact thing. Um, you can't tell in the end, but it's there. So when you go in museums and things and you see the old classical work, there is an underpainting and it is um, a red or whatever's you know, complementary underneath. Um, so, I, so it is like I'm painting it twice or three times or five times. Um, but in the end, the result is what I'm looking for. Now I do, this is just one technique. I can do a la prima, which is basically um, what I'll be doing today because it's wet. Um, but a la prima would be starting wet and keep going layer on top of layer. There's a video on my, I think it's on Facebook or Instagram where it shows a painting and I, I went straight through two or three days. I think it was two, two, three days straight through. Of course I slept. Um, but never letting it dry. So that is possible. Um, it's just I prefer seascapes to do it in this manner where every single layer dries in between. So uh, that painting there probably has 15 to 25 layers um, because it also has glazing on top, um, which is a technique that you, you can make things warmer or cooler in different areas by just putting like a clear glaze on top. Um, so I'm gonna start doing this now. Is there any questions? Everyone's so quiet. No questions? Oh, I was going to read you something. So everyone should keep a journal if you're an artist, or if you're not even an artist, you should keep a journal. And things that I say in my, that, uh, there's a lot of things that I should be doing that are in here. Um, but this is what I wrote, and I thought it was important for this. So I'm just going to read it. This is something I just wrote to myself to remind myself of something. So I wrote, I feel like I have reached a threshold in my artistic journey. In order to push myself past the comfort zone, I have to accept my intellectual decisions based on intuition. I need to let go and trust my education and field practice. So if I've done enough of that, and I've done enough of this, very color theory is very intellectual that's the field practice then I should be able to paint this with no problem if I just go for it if you if you think it has to be perfect and you and you take forever to put a color on or or if you're mixing while you're doing it it's not going to work because you're focusing so much on your mixing that by the time you get over here you don't know where to go but if you pre-mix and you've thought it through, and you worked for two days on your composition to make sure there's no tangents, there's no conflict of anything, um, that it's, it has a pattern. Um, I'm, using, um, I'm using the S composition. I'm using, because you can use multiple. I'm using um, triangular convergence to create more impact, so I'm using all these different compositional tricks to create a powerful, energetic painting. So if, if I figure that out, this is the hardest part. If I figure that out in advance, then nothing is going to stop it from being a great painting. So this is where you, and this is where I can make, I could wipe the whole thing out right now. So you can change, but once you start putting your color down, you really, you're, you're limited to your changes and if you haven't mixed your colors properly then it's not going to come out right um, the way the my weak my weakness is color and when I went to when I applied to graduate school um, they looked at my portfolio and they said the first thing you need to take is color theory and so I, I oh I guess I don't know anything about color so 
what I learned is that you can cheat on a few things. So since my weakness was color, my palette is arranged so I don't make any mistakes. So I used to line one side with cools and one side with warms. So when I'm in a section where it's cold, if, the, if I'm in a cool section in here where it's cold, sun's not in there, then I would only mix paints from this side, never go over there. And then if the opposite, if I need the warm sun, only use this up here. And so, and, and that way, I, d I didn't make a mistake in the paintings. Um, now, I've gotten away from that. I don't even need to think anymore. I, um, but that's how I helped myself. There's a lot of people who can't draw. And I know, I, I mean, I grew up drawing because I'm pre-computer age. And, um, but I went to my master's degree with computer kids. And they always argued why they couldn't use the computer to do their drawing. Um, and the teacher would say, because you can't. <laughs> you know, this is classical training. Um, but I do know that every artist or throughout history has used whatever technology that they have available. So if, if you don't, aren't strong at drawing and you don't have the rest of your life to, to do it, then you should do what you should, like um, Kevin McPherson, I went to his workshop, and he did a bigger canvas than this, and he gridded the whole thing. And then he gridded his whole paper. And then he did, he did square by square by square. And I thought, why is he doing that? And because that was what his weakness was. He wanted to make sure it was right. So I, I believe that if you have someone who can tell you, so you should always seek out somebody who knows um, what your weakness is. And you should take in that information. And whatever the weakness is, you should supplement yourself with that you know, with the um, palette or the, um, the drawing. I know some people project. I know a lot of Western painters project. Um, I, I had an experience where someone asked me to do a mural. And so I bought the projector, and I got all my things, and I showed up. And it was a big uh, showroom with gl glass windows, and it was broad daylight there was no way I was going to be able to project. So I thought, what am I going to do? And there was a crowd of people all waiting for me to do this mural. And so I just, just did it. And it just came out. So I thought, well, I don't need a projector. So you, sometimes you have to try things to figure out what you can do and what you can't do. Just be accepting to fail. Um, but to get to this point, there's a lot of ways you can get here. But um, this is not a value study. I know everyone jumps and says, you're doing a value study. For me, this is not a value study. It's an abstraction. So if I stand really far back, um, it's the power I'm looking for of um, what, what would impact a person. Um, you know, so that, that's, this is where I'm, I want to make sure that the darks all connect. I want to make sure that there's less light than darks or the other way around. Like I'm thinking of all the, these compositional problems which you'll read about um, to make it work. OK. No questions. When you say safe walnut oil is a safe oil, you're talking about, to me, I'm hyper-allergic, but it's not safe. Right? Well, you, you can get any oil. So you can use kitchen oil. I just, it comes in this giant thing. Um, so I use walnut oil. But yeah. It's, there's certain things that bother me, oils, but this does not bother me. So you can try um, any oil. But I know Rosemary Brushes, um, she recommends that they be washed in shampoo. Uh, I just, all I do is I dip it in the walnut oil and wipe it on a um, napkin. And I don't even, I don't clean them beyond that. That's why it's all over my fingers. Um, so yeah, any, any other questions? The walnut oil, um, it's on the, the list. It's um, the M. Graham and Company. You can order it. It's on the supply list. And you can order it online or through any store. Mike? So how do you maintain, when I looked at what I painted, I didn't see the tool, but I thought the canvas still made the same as you would paint on that. So are there layers as you increase them? Are they uh, wet, thin? 
Um, yeah, this one is on. This one is a little bit thinner. Um, this. This one, yeah, this. Yeah. A, a lot. So, so when I do a layer, I don't mean I cover every inch of the canvas. Um, there are certain parts um, that I build up on, and certain parts I leave. If you shine a light through the back of them, you could probably see where things are lighter or thicker. Um, I've been working a lot heavier lately, heavier paint, which takes longer to dry. Um, but yeah, you're right. So there are, I leave, I leave things, if something's working, I leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah, so you, uh, it takes all you, well, when this dries, it's very difficult. So that's why I like it to dry. So when I know it's perfect, uh, now am I saying this is perfect? Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it, but in my mind. So I can come in and I can just, I can just wipe out, but you can see it's, it's almost not doing it now because it's two days or a day and a half. Um, but on that first day, it comes right out. So the first day or two, you have to, you have to work it. Um, but you, yeah, you have to, I, I think the hardest part is the first two days getting, getting this down for me. And I let it dry completely. So as those layers dry and you start adding more layers, are you using the bad over ink type of principle or? Well, the, the re, now. I, when I did the Ella Prima painting where it's, th I use thick, thick paint and I just go right on top of it, on top of it, on top of it, um, it dries fine. I don't have any problem. And then you put a glaze on top of that and then you put the varnish on top of that. Th there's no cracking or anything. Why? I'm using quality paint, quality canvas. Um, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not using too much medium. There's a certain percentage of medium you're supposed to use with your paints. That creates cracking. So I'm very conscious of the percentage of the oil paint versus medium and the quality of my materials. So I'm not concerned about fat over lean. I know what you're saying, but um, I haven't had any problems with any of that. Um, anything else? Or should I just throw it? Um, say that again. You don't over dilute to make the lighter values. So do you just paint, put more paint on to make the darker values? Well, I don't, like, you don't see very, are you saying that um, I'm, I'm not using a lot of white or light colors? No, just the amount of, uh, to get the variety of values, leaving only the one color and not all. Like this with the Prussian blue, where I use this one color to get all these. Oh, okay, the same way. Just yeah, so for the, this one tube of paint, um, I, this would be the white. I added white to it, and I was able to, as I added the white, the color changed like this. Do you use white in the, uh, I the use, uh, no. So the white is the canvas. Oh, okay. Is so that the question? Yeah, that answers yeah. the question. Yeah, the white, I, I leave the canvas open for the white just for my own. And for the lighter uh, red shade? Um, I just use less paint. Oh, okay. Yeah. That answers it. Or I wipe it. I, um, I have a squeegee, too. It, so you can squeegee this, like with a shower squeegee. And it, ta it breaks down um, the surface. So it's, if, you li if you like a smooth surface, if you like it to be you no know, brush strokes, um, you can squeegee it down, and there still leaves an impression. Okay. So any? Did you use that little nub brush, or did you use the like towel to get, um, the, get the values? No, I just use less. I use more walnut oil or less. I see, so you dilute it. Yeah, I dilute it with the walnut oil.
to start, and then it, it's, it's it dry. No, it's not dry. But um, yeah. So I'm going to start. Um, do you want to ask questions while I'm working? I think that'll. How much time do we have? Um, you can go till eight, and then we're going to break. So okay. Half an hour. Okay. So, some will someone talk or ask something? Well, oh, um, I do use. I can use a computer, and I can use paper. Uh, I know some people like to get their photograph uh, printed out at Kinko's, the exact size of their painting. Like C. W. Mundy does this. Um, that's great for him, but I, I, to me, it makes no difference if it's crumpled up on the floor and it's this big. Um, because I, I've, already, I've already figured out in my head what it's going to look like. It's not going to look like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't paint what I see. I wrote this down for you somewhere. Um, oh, I, one other thing I wanted to show you. I do, I do sketch, which um, I don't have any drawings for you today, but I because I sell them all. But I do a very detailed sketch of, of paintings um, in graphite. Um, prior to that, I'll do uh, just Sharpie um, like ideas of what I may want to paint. And I, w what I'm looking at is negative space. Because for me, it's about the abstraction, which um, it has to be the strongest thing for me in a painting. Uh, more so than what it is. Like, who knows what, the, you know, you don't know what this is. But um, it is rocks and it is water. Um, so that's my technique. So I use, I use the Sharpie and I do pencil sketches. Because I, all the preparation work makes it go. So I'm going to go now. Um, so let me think. I wish there was music. First of all, I never paint at night, right, honey? Uh, I only paint with natural light. Um, so I paint at 7 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon every day, and I don't take a break. Um, I work in two different studios, which works for my technique, because we, we travel every 10 days, coast to coast. So while I'm working on seven paintings on one coast, then I go to the other coast, and those are drying. So then when I arrive, it's a fresh eye to the composition and the paintings. I'm excited. They're dry, ready to go. Then I, then I get to a point where if I go beyond, beyond what I, I'm ready for, I have to leave, thank God, or I'll ruin it. And then I go to the other coast, and I pick up from there. I was telling Dottie the other day that for some reason, I'm doing all my West Coast seascapes here and all my East Coast woodland scenes there, and I, and I haven't quite figured out why that is. Um, I, think, I think it's because I'm pulled away from the environment, and it looks so different. So the color quality here uh, of the California um, light really pops in the gray of Massachusetts, and then the other way in California, it's so bright that I, I like to tone my um, work down. Um, I work on um, probably um, 14 to 20 at a time. Um, this is one. This is considered small for me. This is right now. This is considered small. I'm working on uh, um, six feet, six feet tall paintings. I have a, an easel that goes up and down and side to side, so I don't strain my back. But um, for me, these are very difficult to do. Um, I'm, I have a hard time with small. I don't know why. It's just how I see. Um, and so um, because this is so easy for me, I've now decided I'm, I'm going to go even bigger. And um, my husband's probably shaking his head, but we're building a new studio so I can go even bigger because I'm limited to door height <laughs> right now. Um, so I was trying to figure out how I could work that, and it's working. We, have, we don't have it yet, but... Um, so yeah, all right. I usually use a palette, but for some reason I don't have one here. Um, do you ever wear gloves? I do, so I, I wear gloves. Um, 
I wear gloves to set up my paints and to take them down. Um, what I was told from a scientist from Stanford um, that she said that it's, there's more harm in putting your hand inside of the glove where the fumes get in there all day. So if I'm all day working and there's fumes inside, whereas if I put on lotion on my hands and create a barrier, then when I get paint on my hands, I'll wash my hands and then reapply the. So, because you want your hands to breathe. Now that was her opinion. It just works for me. Um, I, if I am going to varnish or do something that is uh, messy, I will put the gloves on. Um, there's a couple parts. I use tissue at one point, and I do use my glove. But let me get going because I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to get going. Um, I, we, t you guys can take a picture of this palette over here because this is kind of how I work. It's there's no science to it. Um, what Vasari is great about is on their website, each color, um, they tell you if it's cool or warm. So this is, this is how bad I was. I had to, on my tubes, I had to write, this is cool. Because I couldn't tell, is that cool or is that warm? Um, so I don't need to do that anymore. But that really helps. If you, if you, the more you know about your products, the better you're going to perform. Um, the rosemary brushes, uh, to me, are unbelievable performance. So you're, the, the spring of the brush and the edge are how you can create the, this type of craftsmanship, I guess. Um, over here, I don't, I'm using brush, like hog's hair, or I don't care. But when I, when I have a museum show, and it has to be top quality. I want it, everything to be perfect. So I, I use the right brushes. I know um, I, used to br I used to clean them every night. And, and now I paint so much that they just stay wet all the time. And then I wear them out. I've never had that before. But I, I wear my brushes out now, so I just throw them out. Um, so it's important about the quality of your, especially the canvases uh, and my frames, too. So this. Um, this is a framing company in Idaho, and the, um, they're hand carved. And the carving here is, this one is my carving, and only for me. So he does, a, he does a carving if once you establish yourself. I was borrowing another artist's carving. Um, and then at some point, he said, all right, you need to get your own. And so now I have my own. Um, so when you start to show at a, at a more competitive level, um, th this type of thing is, is required. So you have to, there's a lot of um, price points and great craftsmen that do framing, but you, it's, as, it's as important as the brushes, the paint, and everything else. So how you present your work. What kind of brushes are you, filberts? You know, it's um, people are very particular about what kind, and I never, I never was, but now I am. I like uh, long. I like a long uh, handle. Um, I like, I like the quality of her wood, um, and I like a long uh, brush. These are longs. This is a short. See the difference. Um, I like flats for certain things, like if I need to. Um, do a certain brush stroke. So as you as you get better, you start to you, you start to know how to operate your machinery. <laughs> so at first, I, I it didn't really matter what I used, um, but now it does matter. It I, I know exactly what I'm getting from each brush. Um, so you work your way up through. Um, so yeah, don't jump into something. You you work your way when you start not getting. So when you start getting not the result you want. That's when you need to get a new brush or a new paint. So a great example is I couldn't make these colors with other companies. And I couldn't understand why. I, was, I could see it. I would mix it. And I'd put it up there. And I would be so discouraged. And then I would go um, to a museum or I would see like Clyde Espivig's work. And I'd go up to it. 
And I'd say, that is not that, this kind of paint. Where, where do you get your paint? So then I search out these painters. And I, Vasari seemed to be the number one. So I went to their factory in New York and worked with her. And she'll do things like, I will show up and say, there's a certain golden hue on the ocean top when the seaweed reflects from underneath. I, and I can't mix that color, could you help me? And then she will mix it and say, this is how you do it. And you, uh, there's pictures of me just going like this, looking <laughs> at her. And so um, also reaching out to you, the product people to help what you're having problems with. Because it's, it's, sometimes it's not you, it's your, it's your products. OK, now I, I need some water. And I've got to start working so you can see some painting. Um, Please get up and get snacks and go to the bathroom or whatever you need to do. I don't work from one corner and go to the other corner, so don't worry. It won't make sense for a while. Um, it's not picking up, but it is dragging. It's catching it, which I like. Um, I, I like a chunky brush stroke. I like to show the brush work. I saw you chunky. Yeah, I, I'm chunkier now um, than these paintings. Uh, this is what I had here. In, um, so I, I believe that's in, uh, 2016 or 17. Um, so I'm getting thicker and more bold with my um, brush work. It's inevitable when you keep doing it, I guess. I don't know. I think maybe you get bored and you start trying new things. Um, I've already mixed this color. Um, I already have my cool and my, uh, my warm. So I'm going to just imagine that the sun's coming. Can we just hold it down so we can hear? Thanks. So I, I've, I've experienced, oh, I forgot to say. So, uh, I, for my master's degree, my final thesis was um, painting for one year every day the ocean. So if you're going to choose a subject and you want to do it really well, you need to take about a year of actually spending time with it. So I, w I was painting um, every day and looking at the ocean. And I have to honestly say that whole year, there was maybe three paintings that were worth saving. But what I did learn was that every single time I went out there, it, there was the same rock, and there was the same water, and there was the same sand, and there was the same sky. And I couldn't understand why the paintings were so boring until I realized it's how, how they connected that made them more exciting. And it took me the whole year to figure that out. And and I'm, I mean, I'm glad I did it, but it was painful. So I, if you're struggling with something, it just means that you need to do it more. Um, that's, I think that's the most important thing. Um, I, now, I've moved on from seascapes, but I keep um, coming back to them because it's what I see every day on the West Coast. We have a home on the ocean, um, so I see it every single day. And it's going to work its way into my work no matter what. So um, especially nature. I just, I, I really like doing it, so I enjoy it.
have a, I have a question. Okay, I'm going to work while you talk. Okay, um, one of my biggest problems is I'm primarily, a, well, I have been a primarily a plein air painter. Is that Mike? Well, what will happen is... That's Mike, okay. Yes, that's yeah. Uh, hi. Um, and uh, what will happen is I'll paint a painting and then I'll work on it later that day and then, you know, and I'll try to work on it again the next day. And uh, that time is the paint will dry too fast for me and I'll start kind of, it basically, it ends up not looking good. It gets too thick, it gets, um, you know, and then I might paint something different over another, another layer that's kind of thick and basically it comes out too thick and then, you know, if I'm painting a whole different painting on top of another painting that even a bunch of times, it doesn't come out good. Well, and well I, with studio paintings, you know, yep. have the same problem. I, um, I would say that if you have already figured it out before you start, so for whatever reason, um, either your colors weren't thought out correctly or your, your composition wasn't correct, there's something that's stopping you and, and so you're not able to move forward. Do you understand? Um, so yeah. so you, you, need to, you need to spend more time on your sketching, planning, um, and developing your colors before you start painting. Um, because if you find yourself doing that, it's, it's subconsciously your brain's telling you something's wrong. Yeah. So you're not able to continue. Because you know when a painting's going wrong and you're like, okay, I need to go do the wash, or <laughs> I think I'm, you know, but if it's going well, you, nothing can stop you, well, right? Yeah, um, I have a lot of failures. Obviously, if you do um, if you do ten paintings that don't work out, you just set them aside, and then later, um, is it Picasso? Seven years later, he'd pick up one from the pile. So sometimes you're not ready for it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of points in painting that you come to a point where uh, intellectually you know where you want to go, but physically you're not able to do it. You're not able to work it out. So you just stop and set it aside and do something else. And then it'll all of a sudden come to you when you find the answer and you can go back and fix it. Um, what about, and, and, and um, that's, um, I like that's really excellent uh, advice. Um, and the planning and the color mixing is something I'm gonna uh, look into more now. But what about just in general painting too thickly and, and well, I don't want to paint so thick? Well, you, can, you can scrape it out. Um, so while you're painting, you can, um, you, can scrape, uh, you can scrape this like this. You can use brushes. Um, so there's brushes that paint thinner. So um, portrait artists use, use the like badger hair or um, this, this really fine brush, and that'll uh, really smooth it out. It's almost, almost you can't see anything, right? So it might be your brush. Okay. See, it's not you. Those are all the different things. Yeah, yeah it's not you. It's, it's your, yeah, it's I'm your. Trying figure, I've been trying to figure it out for. It's well, probably your brushes. Years, frankly. Uh, or your, your paint's too thick, maybe. Um, the, you, when you have a chance, you can look at the, how oily, and I haven't added anything to these, okay. how wet it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm finding a lot of other tubes small. I, use, I get the big tubes on purpose. They are more expensive, but um, they're not dried out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that the little that, tubes dry out. That could be it, that that could be it too. See, it's your, it has nothing to do with you. Yeah, I, I want to try that paint because I know what you're talking about with paints. Yeah, so yeah, you, uh, try a sample. Um, they are expensive, but you don't, so at first I, I wasn't making enough money selling paintings, so I was using cheaper brands for certain colors. And then the colors that I really needed to get uh, a result on the canvas, I would buy Vasari, okay? So I worked my way up. Um, so like my, yeah. So uh, Gamblin is a great product. Um, I wouldn't say that it's cheaper or more expensive or anything about it. I would just say it's a great product. 
Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say anything bad about any product because I've used them all. You use them at every level. So like I, when you get to a point where you're struggling, it may be the paint. It's not the quality that you need at this point. So it's really important to keep notes in your journal and look back at, well, why was I, why was I so frustrated with this painting? And then now I, you know, it's in your notes. It'll tell you. Um, but yeah, so try different, whenever, if you go to any um, workshops or things like that, um, you can try the, the artist's um, paints or, um, you know, get the samples. You can um, get samples from, if you call, they actually, you can actually call these companies and ask them for stuff um, and try them out. So I don't um, start at one side, and I don't really think too much when I'm layering all this in, because I'm going to show you, if I can hurry up and get this in, uh, how I blend it. Um, it's very unique for me. I don't see any other. Oh, yeah, I do see one other artist doing it. So you'll know. You'll probably know who it is. Um, does anyone have any questions about workshops, uh, that other workshops? Because I've been to them all, just so you know. <laughs> I've been to all the workshops. I've been to all the conventions. And um, I've advertised in every magazine. And if, and I just, if you have a question, I can ask. And all the organizations I'm involved in. Um, why so many? Because. Um, I, I like uh, marine art, so American Society of Marine Artists, um, I thought was interesting. I think they should have more females, um, which th they are doing now. Um, the California Art Club is one of my favorites because of all the shows they offer uh, the artists on the West Coast. Um, you can be an out-of-state member, which I am and uh, participate. Um, Sal Magundi Club, go ahead. Pink patches of color, spots of color. I am because what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's the red coming through, right? And I like texture. And I'm going to do something to this to, to mix it. So I don't mix my colors completely. I like the color strains to run through them. It gives it that vibration. Um, I don't completely mix it up. And I don't care if they blend. Um, as long as I start off with the uh, warm and cool. You can't, I don't know if you can see it from this, but there's, there is a, there's a warm and there's a cool um, working in here. And then he, this, I'm leaving the white. I always leave the white uh, last, um, mostly because I like to put it on top. Um, and I use cold wax to do that, so I'll show you that technique. Um, you use a lot of chroma in the beginning? Um, so the chroma I save for um, the center of interest. The, those things I don't even think about anymore. I used to. So what he's asking is, is where uh, the most intense color is going to be, the most uh, sat saturated, um, brightest spot and it's usually uh, you know in the golden triangle area or wherever your uh, darkest dark and lightest light is um, so those things uh, I used to be very conscious of I used to think about where my horizon line is is make sure it follows in the thirds and all these th all these rules of composition but then you get to a point where your competition is not following the rules, and their paintings are awesome. So then it starts to get fun, because then you start breaking the rules <coughs> and making it work. So um, for this painting, um, I've, I've been working with an X, which is also unusual. So I am putting, sometimes I put my main interest here, but because of my connecting darks, I balance it out. Um, so. Even though you may um, break a rule, you pull it back by doing something more um, to it. Does that make sense? So does that make sense to people who are painters? How many artists do we have here? How many artists? 
I'll see a lot. So there should be more questions. Um, water is another dimension. So um, I know I showed you this. So um, you know I, I cut the canvas in this this manner, but um, there's a lot of my paintings that also go down. So you always have to consider uh, the depth of the water. And it, for me, I don't I don't even think that this is anything but an abstraction and a puzzle that I'm working out. I'm not, I don't, when I paint flowers, people say, what flower is that? I have no idea what flower that is. Can you tell me what flower this is? Because all I see is an abstraction of, of nature and energy that I'm trying to control and to make you see what I see. I'm not trying to create a photograph, right? Um, so I'm pu pushing, pulling, and playing with what I see. Um, and what... <coughs> I, so, all right. Not, any other questions? Just let me know. I, I think it's wonderful that you're able to go to from the east to west coast every ten days. How, how is that? How do you? Uh, why, why do you do that? Why don't we have my husband answer that question back there? <laughs> I think it's awesome. I'm just, I just. I used to fight it and why, really get upset about is that it. Business reason, or, or is it just you like to do that? Or? We are uh, by also from a business standpoint. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, think, I think it's wonderful. And I, I'm, I'm a little envious, frankly, you know, that, 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 that lifestyle. Is. It's, not, it's not the greatest, let me tell you. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just so awesome. I'm sorry, but you're on your own this week because I haven't stayed here. I don't think I've done that yet, have I? But I, he does get dragged to all the competitions, um, and he has to go to all the dinners and things like that. Um, I don't think he enjoys that. that all that, like, oral care to American national competition. All the spouses are banning their spouses. <laughs> no, I'll tell the story. Yeah, I'll tell the story, Mark. I, I feel like no. I am so inadequate. No, no, I'll tell the story. Listen, I, no, I was in Florida. No, Mark, I was in Florida, and I was at a plain air competition, which I do not enjoy. It was No, it was plain air Easton, which is a very big competition. I think it's 11 or 17 days. So he had to come, because we would have never seen each other. And um, it was really hot. And what, he, what my husband did was he rented a car. Is this the one? Or no, that was Florida. He rented a car, and he went down to um, see the Red Sox at the training, uh, spring break, spring training, right? OK? So I'm out in the heat, standing there with my little easel with a little tiny umbrella, and I'm painting. And I see this truck pull up. And the woman gets out with her big hat, and she walks over like this. And her husband drags out one of those giant tents like you see at a sporting event. And he puts it up in the street. And then he gets card tables, too, this big. He sets up a, a lunch kibachi. He's got lawn chairs. He's got a cooler. I was standing there. I was just like. And he comes over and he goes, can I get you a coffee? And I was like, oh my god. So I told Mark, I said, you know, you have no idea. Um, but the traveling for us is working out. It wasn't at first for me, and I, I couldn't. The problem I had was on the airplane, I felt like I was losing time um, from my work. And so what he explained to me was that when you get in the chair of the airplane, because it is a six and a half hour flight, right? So he said, um, when you s sit in the chair, and we are flying first class because of his work, and so that makes a big difference. He says, sit in your chair and pretend uh, that, take a deep breath and pretend you're relaxed in your chair at like home in the living room. And, and once I realized that and started to do my reading and all my work uh, on the computer, then, it, then when I hit the ground, when I hit the ground in California, I'm ready to paint. So I'm actually more efficient um, because my schedule is so tight. So, um, I, so I can thank him for that. Um, but I did fight it for about a year. Um, I, I was using excuses for why I wasn't working, I guess.
Um, but yeah, it is nice to, um, to be able to travel with Mark. Um, okay, so enough of this. I, yeah, I don't know why. I just I figured I might as well. Um, on my palette here, I had uh, lined them up, um, the, the rock formation in the foreground here. And then as I moved to the rock formation in the back, it, it starts to gray. And everything turns gray and green uh, towards the back, even though even though what you see in the photograph is not that, I know because I've seen it a million times. So you have to make a lot of decisions uh, based on your experience outside um, and not rely on your, the devices. If you rely on the devices, you're going to get a flat painting. It's not going to be uh, realistic. Um, yes? It's about 8 o'clock. Okay. you want to take just like a five-minute break, and could all of you get out here? I'm going to keep painting. Is that okay? That's, oh, okay, good. No, you <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to go Kathy. Bronner here has all the raffle tickets in my trusty shopping bag. Everybody get one? Can everyone put theirs in? So, have it so she, he's just going to read the number off. And the first thing, just to reiterate what we're going to be raffling off, we've got 10 rosemary brushes and about um, five Vasari bags, and then the awesome, awesome prize are these tubes of Vasari paint. Yeah. So we'll do those last. Okay. Okay. The first one is A28. I assume everybody starts with A28 soon. Yeah. O32. Wait, who won? I have to see. Oh, that's nice. Uh -huh. Okay. How about the bag for the next one? Yep. Next one's a bag. Okay. Step up by two. This is 034. All right. Now I'm going to move into purple. Step up by two every time. Next one is 019. Oh. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What is the surface you've got here? It's, you know, all this is is a, um, a cardboard, yeah. a foam board with the, you all know, right. the sheets of uh, palette, gray palette. They come on sheets. I just taped it. I couldn't find any beyond. No, it's all I could find. Yeah, there's no reason. This is, um, sh they come in sheets of, of um, palette, or gray palette. It is gray. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What is it? Um, it what it does is um, it makes the foam. I'll show you. Sorry? And you change from one color to No, the not necessarily. I just wipe it. Oh, you wipe it. Yeah. I don't, I, my color harmony is, is already perfect. 
So it doesn't matter if you mix it okay. with another Next paint. Oh. Yeah. I wipe them, though, to, to okay. get the difference. Okay. Oh, 47. Yes. No, I pre I've spent three hours today uh, figuring it out. Color, yeah. So, so uh, right here, this is wet, so be careful. Yeah. But um, one of these colors may have five five colors in them to get the color. Okay. I should probably mention that. I'll remember to mention that. I like the way you hold your brush. Well, it switches around as I go. I, I'm used to a, uh, I'm not used to bending over. I have a easel that goes up and down. I don't, so I don't know what I'm doing. Academy of Art in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, I did it uh, in 2013. So I was, I was old. And all the kids were so young. And it was hard. It was hard. Uh, just because of the computer issues. Um, but I made it. I did it. So. Okay, now I'm going to move to the next section, and I'll blend all this in a minute. Um, so I want it to be grayer here. And I want warmer. There's a what? A tower. It's up and down. Up and down, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like the music notes. There's a yellow. Although this doesn't really help me, does it? It's too green. Needs to be considering things such as planes and angles, too? Uh, yes, so I go in the movement of the water. Uh -huh. okay. Definitely. There's some green in there. That's why it's towering. Okay. 
Dark enough. Now, did she say she mixed the paint with the wet? No, not till the, uh, I get to the foam or to the very end of the painting. I want to minimize my medium. It's a, it's a little wet. It's wet. It's wet. It's sticky. Oh, it changed when I got married. And I waited a few years to make sure that it was going to be still good. Oh, is that fun? That's not funny. That's me. Do you start with your darkest values to um, I, set the stage? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Fritz, you're asking all the right questions. So Fritz is also a member of the Guild of Boston Artists, correct? You're also a member of the Guild of Boston Artists? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, I'm yes. Just yes. You a second, yeah. Folks, can we ask everybody just to maybe move back and sit down so the folks that are sitting can see? This is no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I know. This is exciting. Okay, it's going to go fast now, so I will move it. Thank you for coming up here. And thank you, Michelle, for all those giveaways. Well, yeah, thank you to Vasari uh, Paints and Rosemary Brushes. It was their, their uh, donations. So what I'm, I'm making sure that I'm doing is leaving a lot of open spaces right now. Um, the reason is because I'm going to blend them in a minute. Um, so I am putting in where I think the cools and the warm should go. Um, I can't really tell because I'm so close to it, but. Um, well, that's a question I have. Do you often, when you're painting, go back and forth? I do. Um, so I'll, I have a lot of room in both my studios to back up. And um, it, it's really important because I, most of my paintings are very abstract, even more so nowadays. Um, prior, you know, earlier days. Um, so it's really important um, that I back up. Um, I don't need to quite yet because it doesn't really make any sense quite yet. Um, but it will, hopefully. Uh, the Pacific Ocean is really easy to paint. Um, it's fun uh, because it's so active. I, I haven't had a chance to paint um, in New England yet because it's always foggy when I go. Aww. I plan trips to Maine and I get there and I, I can't see in front of the car. It's, uh, you don't get that on the West Coast. So um, I haven't done any seascapes yet. I have. I've uh, painted in Florida, and it's a little flat. Um, it's hard to get some energy from um, the water, but um, I think that's why so many boats are painted. Oh, oh here's a good thing. Um, it, if you have movement in a painting, whether it's an animal or water or something that's moving, you need to have an upright. So if, if movement is, is like this, you need to have an upright. So if you go back and look at Western paintings of a cougar or something, guarantee you there's a tree right next to him or a rock that's straight up. So that's, a, that's one of the little tricks that um, you need to do there. Um, I don't know the reason. Someone, someone must know the reason of why you need a vertical to intercept the, uh, you know, to create movement. I don't know. That's a good question. I do know that you need to do it to create the effect. Can I ask, do any of your um, California collectors or buyers ever buy any of your paintings that you've done of the East Coast? Uh, yes. Yeah, so. I, I am very fortunate to have uh, wonderful collectors 
who um, they don't care what I'm painting. Um, what they care about is um, that I keep uh, innovating. So one of the things I think is really important is as an artist that you don't um, say, I'm going to be a Hudson River painter. Well, the Hudson River painters are gone, OK? This is, you have to be present. And if you want to um, be an artist um, you know, centuries from now that people look back at, they're not going to look at the people who try to be um, you know, a certain type of painter. They're going to look at the originals, who, who was present. So I, make, I, I consciously um, focus on trying new things. And if I'm successful, like I was successful with the seascapes. I got a lot of awards and things for two, three years. And then I decided, OK, I'm not going to do these anymore. I don't want to be known as the girl who does the seascapes. So then I moved to another series. So if you notice a lot of artists like uh, Matisse, Picasso, de Kooning, they did series. And the series don't necessarily are the same. So you want to you want to make sure that your collectors understand that that um, you're not going to keep doing the same red barn. I had one collector when I started that uh, wanted barns, so I filled a room of her house with red barns, and then I just I had I wasn't getting anything from it. I I mean I was getting money, but uh, you know artistically I was drained and it started to show in the work. So I focused on um, what, what, what I'm working on, and hopefully the collectors will you know, respond to it. And, and so far, they have. I, I stay away from major galleries because of that. I don't, uh, not that I wouldn't be in one, but I haven't, I don't want to be in a gallery that tells me to keep painting the same thing, because they can sell it, which is, they're a business. I understand that. So I look for collectors who are um, looking at my career. And they're looking to see how I'm developing. And so um, the California collectors I have, um, it doesn't matter what I paint. It's more of, what are you doing now? So I will get more visitors. Like Mike is here, came and visited me at my studio with his box of cookies. So people will come to my studio because they want to sneak in and see what I'm working on. And because I, everything's a year out. So everything I'm working on now, no one will see for a year. Um, so the collectors try to sneak in because they want to buy it before you send it off somewhere to a competition or a museum or thing like that. So does that answer your question? Yes. OK. So I've decided that um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to do all water here. And um, the reason is because I brought something with me that I need to show uh, how it works. Um, when you're working on a seascape, uh, it's the most important thing in the entire world if you have a horizon line is that it's straight. If it's not straight, um, it's, it, it absolutely 100% um, is a distraction. So you need to have tools to um, make a straight line. And your arm isn't going to do it. So I mean, maybe someone can do it. But I, I certainly can't. So even though this is wobbling. So um, this was a mistake. I, so a lot of it is intuition. Didn't I read that intuition thing? So um, when I did this and I backed up in my studio, I thought, oh, wow, that looks like, that looks like the, a land mass and the horizon line. And so that's something that I don't see anywhere. And, but it will help push back um, in compositionally. It'll help push back the background so it won't be flat. Um, this actually is a place in, uh, on, off of Pebble Beach um, looking towards uh, Point Lobos. And um, so that, that actually is something. Um, to, you know, obviously, I, I'm just doing this on the whim here. So I can add that. And it's really easy um, you, to do a background landmass for all you artists. It's, uh, it's, it's CAD red, OK? Um, which is, you don't think it is. And it's uh, a bice, this color blue. Um, 
And what it creates is this dull uh, purple, um, a violet, like that. And um, what I use is, I use anything. I'm so, I'm so desperate that I, I carry for my plein air paintings, I use, I use a ruler. And um, I, I use these in my studio because um, if I use a regular ruler, you're looking at your canvas so long that you're probably going to be like this. So this, um, this holds against it like this. Um, and it's, it's, it's not going to be perfect because this is wobbly, but you just, you just put your, it's moving, you put your line across um, and it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know if it's straight, but I'll fix it later, but it's kind of across. And then what you do is you add, you add your land mass. Uh, like that, and then you get your rubber stump, um, which is the best tool in the world, and everyone better buy one. They're at art stores. They're called shape color shapers. Um, you have to look for them in the art store. You just ask for them. I think they're a clay. I think they're for clay, but almost everyone I know, and they come in different shapes. And so this clever little sucker um, will give you the, um, it gives you, it pulls out, it pulls out the gray and it creates the atmospheric line. Like you see, you see, uh, you want a soft line across your horizon. You don't want it um, a hard edge. You want it to be, um, there's always, there's always light, either whether it's homes or water or whatever, at the horizon line. So it, it helps you with, instead of painting them in, because you, you don't, if you spend too much time on that, uh, painting things in, then everyone's going to look at that and they're not going to look at this. So you want to be really subtle. So I use the, I use underneath the canvas and I use the rubber stump to pull out. And then I'll adjust that as I go. But that's basically um, a start. I, I see it's a little crooked. But what I'll do is I'll back the water up to straighten it out. And I'll pull the, the sky down to uh, straighten out the sky. Um, and then I have to consider I have a frame here. So this looks a little tight. I would pull it down uh, maybe a little. But I'm, I'm not going to be really particular because I want to show you how I blend. And I want to show you how I do the foam, because if you all want to do a seascape and you're all wondering, how, do, how does she get the foam to look foamy? I'm going to show you, because I know that's frustrating for people. Um, so let me finish. I'm, I'm getting close. It doesn't look like it, but I'm getting closer to, I never even looked at this. You can tell that I'm not a computer person. I wish I was. I know people are doing um, compositions on Photoshop, but I don't, I don't know how to do it. I wish I did. And they move all their compositions around um, but, and so they don't have to waste time sketching. And I don't see anything wrong with that if you can do it. I just can't do it. I wish I could. Um, OK, so let's get into the water, which is water is very difficult. If you think of it as not being water, it makes it easier. Um, and just think of it as a, another form. Oh, should I speak up? Oh, Fritz can't hear me. Yeah, so Fritz is uh, another um, artist at the Guild of Boston Artists. Did anyone have any questions about the organizations on how to get in them or competitions? Or anyone try to do them? Or do you have any questions? Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you get in one or how do you get in a competition? How do you get in a competition to that level, I guess? OK, so there, there is a, you, have, you should start locally with these wonderful organizations. And that's the most important thing because it teaches you how to manage your time. It teaches you how to submit work that's professional and what they're asking for. Um, 
I uh, submit, I had someone from the Guggenheim Museum or Foundation asked me to be in a show um, last fall and it was six or eight months, was it Mark, of um, work leading up to, it was that much work of interviewing um, paintings, every, it was just, that was the process, it was that many months. And I got to the very end as a finalist and you had to have four or five references and um, one of my references was in China, and he didn't respond. And so you're Im immediately el eliminated. So a lot of these competitions you enter and you don't get in, it could be as easy as your format of your photo is wrong. They never looked at the work. They never looked at your name. It was just not the right size, so it just goes in the, in the garbage. So it's really, really critical that you start off locally and you learn the basics of how, what is required to enter a show and, and understand um, the timeline. The timeline is the most important, you know, when your images have to be ready and what, what you're supposed to do. Is it flowers? Is it, a, you know, whatever theme it is, you have to follow that. That's not me. Um, and you have, to, um, you have to be open to criticism quite a bit, especially when you're starting out, um, because that's the only way you're going to learn. So if you're doing something wrong, like your frames are wrong, if, if, you, if you have the wrong... So if I enter a competition and I send this frame um, to the Autry Museum in LA, it, they wouldn't put it on the wall. Um, maybe they would tell me why. And I would learn, and but by the time you get to that point, you know. So you have to start locally, and you follow their rules. And then once you start winning um, first, second, third place uh, merits, um, and you start to establish a resume by doing that, then you um, and you have already. Am I, is it me? And then you. Am I good? And if you, then you, um, join the clubs at any level, they basically just want your dues. Um, and the reason they want your dues is because they need to pay their staff. And, um, and you want to support uh, the groups you believe in. There was a lot of groups I was involved with that I had to sit back and think, you know what, I don't really, it's not really doing anything for me. I don't, I don't like the way this group paints. Um, you know, I, it's not, type of work they're doing. Um, and you get to know how the uh, clubs work. So suppose you have a show coming up and you find out immediately who the judge is. And once you know who the judge is, you're pretty much going to know who's going to be in the show because they all have their favorites, like in any, like dog shows are the same way I hear. So if you know a certain judge is going to be judging, and um, you aren't, you've never gotten in a show that they've judged, then why bother? Why, then wait till the next time. Um, so you have to be smart about your selecting and you have to um, make sure that everything is 100% correct um, in the application process. Um, and if you don't know how to do it, they, every single group has helplines or whatever that can help you through it and you, you can't wait for the last minute um, I've had a couple shows recently because I've been so busy that I couldn't prepare for, and um, I, this is too light, and so um, I immediately thought I'm not going to enter, but then I felt guilty. Look, see how I can just pull it out with this little stump? 
Um, so then immediately I said, well, I better just support the club and enter the contest anyways because they're going to need my dues or we won't have any shows. So if you don't give dues, there's going to be no shows. Um, so I put in the painting knowing that it was terrible. And then I was thinking to myself, well, maybe I'll get in. Uh, you know, I've been working hard this year. And they know, who, you know that I work hard. And so then I didn't get in. And then I thought to myself, well, of course you didn't get in. You, didn't, you weren't ready. So you have to understand that if you're not ready, uh, you're not going to get in. Um, and then how do you get ready? How do you know you're ready? You have to ask somebody who's already doing it, like me. So you could, you could contact me. You could come by my studio. And you could say, look at this. Do you think this is going to get into it? And I could probably tell you in 10 minutes whether or not it, it'll get into whatever type of show you're trying to get into, or it will. And so then you, that's how you really know is if you ask. You can't just blindly be uh, submitting things to shows that you don't know anyone in it and you don't know anything about it. You have to learn by asking um, and, and, and trying. And the failures, so if anyone's done the judging um, or you go online, it's online jury, and you, there's these boxes, and it shows every show that you've applied to. Well, I've, I've had years where it's all X's, no's. X's, all reds. And then, then it got to a point where it was all greens. And I thought, this is great. Uh, it took about 10 years. And then now, the, the X's I get, I get so mad. But I know it was because I wasn't prepared. And so um, for a show uh, like this, this one here has won many awards. And for each show, I made sure I started, well, this one. OK, this is another thing. If you have a winning painting, then keep entering it in other shows. Okay, That's the other thing. Because you build up your resume. It, so it says four different shows at that one award. But they don't know it was the same painting. Um, so that's a good trick, too. Yes, you can. Because um, you got to start locally. Um, and then uh, the other thing is, is uh, now, if I'm going to enter a show uh, at the California Art Club gold medal show, I start one year before. So, if, so um, you have a list at home, and it tells you all your deadlines. And you need to start a year before. Um, but like I said, I've been rushing, and I haven't been getting in some shows I wanted to. Um, it doesn't matter, um, but it does matter to, to, to me. But um, yeah, so I guess the answer is you need to seek out. You need to join the clubs. You need to start locally. and. Um, it's, it's actually fair. I, I don't want to say that they just want your money. It's all fair. It's just um, whether it's for you. Like Oil Painters America is not for me. I did their national show. I did all their regionals. I have won awards. But it's just uh, not for me. And I don't know why, but I, I just realized it. So I guess maybe if you just try different things, um, that'll be more helpful because, um, like I said, don't be afraid to fail. So try different ones, and then if they don't work out, then move on. But, and, but really invest yourself in them. Don't half do it because half doing it isn't going to get you in any show. You have to go 100%. And if you don't know what you're doing, you have to ask someone like, like me who will help you walk the steps. But if you do local shows for a couple years, You'll know what you're doing by the time um, you're ready for the next step. And trust me, there's steps. I'm, I'm at the bottom of what I thought was at the top. So you, you keep starting at the bottom every time you achieve something, which is very frustrating. But I, that's what I like. I think it's like golf. I don't, do the golfers feel that way? I think so. Um, yeah, so exactly, yeah. Um, so I don't let anyone have anything if they have it planned for a show. Um, because it could go to multiple shows. It could, um, a lot of the shows won't let you uh, 
So I had a, I'll give you a couple examples. I had um, a painting that I put on, so, oh, so look, this is how I do my background water. It's just like the, the uh, notes on the thing. I do horizontal and vertical, horizontal and vertical, all the way across. We're leaving open spaces. Um, and I don't care what it looks like because it's all going to be blended any second. And then I'll start sharpening the edges if I, if I have time. But um, this is how I do the backgrounds, like that one over there. Um, and then I'll stick in a couple uh, darks here and there, and they will blend up later. Um, so what was I talking about, the shows? Um, yeah, collectors for oh. an item to show. Right. So um, I put something online on social media, um, and a collector saw it, and he called and said, I, wanna, I want that. And I said, well, it's promised to a show. And so he said, OK, fine. What show is it? And so I said, you need to call this museum, and this is the number, but it won't be available until January. And it was September. And I thought he was just going to say, oh, forget it. Um, but he did. He called, and he arranged with them to purchase it. But it did have to sit on the wall for a year. Um, so it depends. If they're in a hurry and they want it now, um, they'll beg and plead, and they'll say uh, anything to try to get it. But <laughs> you have commitments, and you sign contracts. So the, you sign contracts with the big um, shows, and you can't sell it. Um, you can't make changes to it, um, to the paintings, once it's submitted, things like that. Uh, the Easton. East, uh, Planar Easton um, was a, um, no, it was not an invitation. Was it an invitation? So some of these are invitational. California Art Club Gold Medal is an invitational and a jury. So some of these shows, you wonder why big artist names are in it. It's because they've been called and said, please be in the show, because it draws the crowds. And that's what you want if you're a young um, emerging uh, artist. You want to be in shows with well-known artists so you don't care that, that you're suffering and trying to get in the show and they just get a call. And they, they like, oh, I have to have a painting in that show. Um, but it's really important um, that the younger, uh, younger, the less experienced artists are participating um, because that's how, that's how you get people to look at your work. Like if it was all beginners, no one would go. Um, and then it's frustrating. You sometimes, some of the shows, like Oil Painters America, you show up to the opening and all the paintings are sold on the opening night of the well-known artists because um, collectors know to call, to call beforehand. So if you wonder that if that's, I, I mean, a question, I don't know. So getting close to, I always have trouble with the flat areas. I, I want to look. Um, I know they're cooler, but they're not darker. The reflected light from the cool wave and the uh, overhead sky uh, creates a very difficult area here and here. That I'm sure people have trouble with that. I always leave it towards the end because I'm puzzled, like, how am I going to do this? And then how I solve it is I just put in the darks. And then when I blend this, you'll see, um, it'll, things will smear on it. And then I kind of touch it up after that. So I'm going to choose to do just some little edges in, in this water areas. Um, which they pick up. You know, yeah, I hate to t I hate to break it to all of you, but everything you're seeing here will be covered eventually. Um, it's uh, most of painting is taking away, so as much as you put on, 
um, you are pulling it out at the same time. It's a, a give and take uh, process. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll show you. I'll do it f sooner than later because I know I'm probably getting close on time. Um, okay. What time is it? Okay, so I'm going to start blending, and then and then add the lights, and then show you how I will do the foam because I know you all want to know that. But let me put some more grays in here. I, I do both, so I'll show you right now. Let's just go. Let's just go while I, I got this going. Um, so what I'm going to do now is so um, I never I always thought you had to paint a painting with just a brush, and I always thought that you had to uh, you couldn't manipulate it in any other way. And then I took all the workshops I've taken. So um, if has anyone taken C W Mundy's workshop? Anyone C W Mundy? He's a uh, a fantastic painter. Um, so what he does is he, I paint thick, he paints thick. Um, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to lose the quality of the brushwork because I there's energy in brushwork. I don't want to remove the thickness because I like to build on top of thickness. So what you do is you put your your gloves on and you actually you sit here like this and it doesn't take long and it doesn't do much. But what it does is it picks up color and it scatters it all over the painting like this, and it, it breaks down um, the it breaks down the um, weight of the brushwork and it creates like the water um, the up the up and down of the splashes and the in the rocks it creates the coolness into the into the browns and so it just you just do this a little bit to until you see it all over and it looks messy and you're like crying because as it, all the painters know here there's an ugly before a beauty in painting it's you have to go through this a lot of times people stop painting at this point um, this is the most crucial point because this is where the most energetic um, brush work is going to happen. It's just Kleenex. So oh, it's just Kleenex. Cool. That's it. So that's what I, you can see it here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to leave all that in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I go at this point. What I do is I start going in with. I will spend a day um, going into every little crack and corner. And I'll pull back out all these little lines, and I'll make uh, like horizontal lines or things like this wherever I want to fix things, or if I want to um, make something a little more. Like I'm working, I work edges with this. Um, if I see like that rock up there, I want a little more clear. I'll pull that or make it smaller. I can cha do those changes. So I'll do this for a long, long time. And then I will blend with a soft, soft brush, like this one right here. So this is, oh, I, so I use synthetic, synthetic brushes. They're not a real, they're plastic, I think. I don't know what they are. Um, I just like the bounce of them. And I like the brush, the, I like to see the brush. Um, this brush here, does that makes it smooth. So suppose I want to um, let's let's work on one the water area because we're going to add the white. So I want to break down uh, before I put the white on top. I want to soften the edges. I use this brush to soften edges between um, areas. So you can blend different directions. And or pick up, if I want to pick up something that's too blue and put it somewhere else. I'm still leaving the red showing quite a bit. And uh, maybe five or seven layers from now, that it'll even cover more. But right now, I just want to kind of smooth this stuff out. 
pull this out. And break up the, um, the monotony of it, just so. I don't even know. I wish I could have worked longer on this area, because this is probably going to be the funnest part in the end. Um, I don't know how many people are on the internet, um, but I will continue to post this over the next few months um, so you can see. Um, but if you sign up and put your address on my thing over there, I will send you, because I know a lot of you out here do not use the internet, I will send you uh, photographs. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I'll post it on all the social media outlets that I'm on. Um, and then now I'm going to do some white because I need to see some white. Um, so cold wax, here it is. This is the greatest invention. Um, what is it? It's wax. Um, you're, not, you're only supposed to use a certain percentage. Uh, I would say like a third, but you can call and ask. So all it is is this sticky stuff. And um, it's, it's wax, and you, you take it, and suppose, so we're going to do some of the wave there. And, um, for me, I, I see that it's, it's lighter here, and so I'll use the a yellow. Um, and I'll mix it in, and it's grainy. It looks like sand is in there. And then the, what I do is, is I, um, I scrape it over the top like this. And what happens is it, it creates little tiny bubbles um, on top of the canvas. It's, and it's cold wax. So it creates, um, like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Just like, it's like there's sand in it. So it's, And then I can, I can scrape it out. And then add, add more. It kind of is a little, a little bit of pink. So this is a palette knife that I'm applying it with. I could do it with a brush also. This is just a little faster right now. Um, now, if I also do this with the waves, so I can use a palette knife to cut in and get rid of uh, lines or add lines. So I can. I sometimes I spend the whole day doing this, and I just fix every single wave or take it out, and then you get all this extra stuff, and then I can fill in spaces um, like this. And then I, when it's dry and you use cold wax, that's the best because you get, you get the uh, spray. So the spray on these paintings, I don't know if it'll do it because it's not, where's the spray? up here. Um, it, it creates, it goes in as a bubble. You'll have to look up close. You'll have to look, come up after, but it creates a little. And then I can use a brush too. That's probably faster for me. But I've only used one brush, or two brushes. That's good. I was telling somebody that you you can only if your color th if your color harmony is correct, so if you if the harmony of all your colors all work together, then you can use one brush, and you just wipe it. If if it's off, um, then the brush will show it. But it should be neutral gray every time I I uh, wipe it. Um, I am. So the cold wax is over here. It's not very much of it. 
And the only reason I'm doing it is to show you so you can probably come up after and see the little bubbles. Um, because I know everybody doesn't really know about it. And I know it's something uh, that I use quite a bit. Um, so let's just keep adding some color, white in here. Uh, no, I would add it at the very end. I'm just doing it for you. Um, because there's going to be so many layers on top of this that that I, it'll, so what I, this is how I paint is I start off messy and it gets tighter and tighter as I go. So what I'll, I want it to be energetic, loose, and I want to uh, make sure that it, there's a brush, brush, like I'm painting. I want to be painting and I don't want to be careful. I want it to, um, I don't want it to look like a photograph. I want it to be alive and flow and, and let the paint work. Um, and I don't want to be too careful. Oh, no. OK. No. Wow, that's quite the uh, get off the stage announcement, right? Well, OK. So I, I mean, I don't know if you have any questions about, uh, like, obviously, obviously you can't believe that it's going to go from that to that. But it does. That's how I do it. So if you're spending all day long trying to get that right away, it's not going to happen. So you're going to send us the progress Sure. Yeah, I, I think that'll be the best because. Well, no, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, because you'll understand. Uh, so basically what I'll do is I will um, I'll go through the entire thing again with a uh, and knock take things out so this is too thick right now so I'll thin it out like this and then I will take I'll take the rubber stump and I will make sure that I get this rock in correctly and I'll do this give and take, give and take all the way until, it, I don't even know what it looks like, but until I'm, I'm happy with it and then I'll let it dry. And after it dries, yeah. go back in and add more of the spray and the wax yes. and so forth yeah. until you get it where yeah. you need it, where you yeah. want it. So if you want to come up and look at it, or you can touch the, I mean, look at the cold wax and everything. I. Um, I thank everyone for being here. I wish I could thank you. thank you. I wish I could do an entire painting in one evening, but I you have to know it's impossible. Um, but Absolutely. knowing that it's this messy to start is probably makes you hopeful and it'll make you looser when you're in front of the canvas. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you, Dottie. Thank you everyone. Or just with the oil? You have to ask the manufacturer, so ask Gamblin, because I just don't use acrylics. Um, I don't see why not.